How's it going guys? In this video I'm going to be replacing the EGR valve in a Volkswagen. The one I'm working on is a Volkswagen Jetta and the engine code is CAY. So this is the new one here and the first things I want to do on the top end is remove the intake system up here to make room down the back. I have the cover taken off already here uh, which is just a pull up and around here I'll be making some space uh, to gain access to some pipes down the bottom and backing off the exhaust on this side. To remove the air intake pipes you have Phillips all the way around here then you want to disconnect this here free these pipes here and down on the underside down there there is a jubilee clip that you want to disconnect and also remove this breather pipe here that will allow this to move out freely and you'll have room to uh, to gain access down the back I will film as much as I can with this video, but I do have time restraints and when the customer needs it back. So I will film as much as I can um, while also trying to do the job as quick as I can. So if there's bits that I skip, bear with me. I will uh, I will run through everything, everything I can in this video. Because you'd need to be a contortionist to uh, actually film and get all of these bolts out, I'm just going to kind of go over roughly what I'll be doing in the next hour I suppose um, this bolt here needs to come out them top ones there are secured in by either a 10 mil or a uh, Torx head either or whichever you can get up to then on the underside here you have these torque heads one on the top one on the bottom for this pipe same again on this side behind this black pipe torque one on the top one on the bottom electrical connector here just to this side i need to remove and then you have torque heads at the back that holds on the egr there's four of them one up here one down there and uh, there'll be two more on the other side this needs to be disconnected here probably as well and then the lower side of the pipes if i can get at it so this pipe here needs to be disconnected and this needs to be disconnected here i'm going to be doing that all now uh, also this if you can see it's very difficult with the room just up on this side here there's two more that needs to be removed and obviously the top side of the other of this pipe as well will need to be removed so plenty to take out and uh I'm going to start dis disconnecting all of them now and I will check back in later on. So I'm back up on the top side of the engine now and I have disconnected the exhaust from the turbo up here. So there's a bracket that wraps around, I have that removed. There is bolt down there, I had that removed. There's a heat shield, uh, I took that out of the way as well because it's easy. And um, I also took out the sensors. So there and there. So it screws in there and there and that allows it to move back. I've just put it back up in the air and now I have managed to move uh, the exhaust to the right hand side and that has given me enough room to start to tackle the bolts that's holding in uh, that pipe just right above me there. Uh, I need to take out both of those. I'm using my 3 8 long snap-on ratchet, uh, short extension and a wobble joint onto my 13 mil shallow socket to get those. You're going to need a host of different tools to do this job. Uh, long extensions, short extensions, wobble joints, um, different ranges of torque heads and allen heads and uh, allow a lot of patience to uh, maneuver around to get enough space 
to free them out. That's another view there. I took that sensor out of the way at the top because I thought I might be able to get a bolt, but I don't think it made that much of a difference. Uh, I have them to remove now, take that down. And then I have to remove the pipes on the left hand side above the electrical connections there. I don't know if you can see that just in this area I have a pipe to take out afterwards. So we're getting there, it's a slow process, it takes time, there's a lot, a lot of things to remove, uh, very limited space, uh, you can just see at the top side, you can just see in that area there, that's where uh, I disconnected the exhaust, I pushed it back out of the way. To remove that bracket, you have to come up from this side here, long extension, and there is an Allen um, the hex head basically head that you have to uh, wind down to release the uh, to release the clamp that holds that on that's pretty much it for now i'll check back in when i have a lot more removed and i'm closer to getting it out i now have uh, this pipe removed and once you have that one taken out it leaves enough access to be able to drop that out of position and i'll just show you that now So if you uh, can see up there now, you can see to the right hand side in this area, that is the first pipe that you remove. And then the inner part is the uh, second piece that you remove. So I'm gonna go about taking this pipe out next and there is torque heads there, down there, and there's two more on the other side that actually hold it in um, to the engine. This, again, I said this electrical connection. We have some pipes uh, and I'll have to disconnect that on the top side as well. But there's a lot more room around it now and I'm not sure there's probably a couple other smaller pieces to remove. That probably removes on the top end or in here, I'll check that out, but that needs to be freed out too. Okay, I have nearly everything out now. It's just the electrical connector on the left hand side. Um, I have pretty much all the securing bolts taken out all around and the plumbing pipes, the coolant hoses on either side of the EGR valve also disconnected. Uh, you're going to need a lot of uh, different size tools for this. I spoke about it earlier, but uh, I had a question there not long ago about my 3.8 ratchets, why I have so many. It's exactly for jobs like this is, is why I have so many. I've used every single one of them snap-on ones that I have multiple times in different areas on this. And my stubby one was a godsend in a couple of areas. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to uh, be uh, getting involved in this with a limited amount of tools, that's for sure. I'll just, I'll just show you on my workbench um, some of the ones I've been using for the underside. So pretty much all of these tools here uh, has been involved and these are my ratchets. So every one of them, but like I was saying, that one for tight areas and actually been able to move it and, and keep levering to, to free them out and to back them out all the way save a lot of time this is not a very straightforward job it's not a simple job uh, it isn't one i'd like to be doing without the correct tools without a lift to drop it to the right height just as you have it there i um i can drop the height so i can reach further up in when i need to so i'm able to lower the car down so i can reach my arm up further to get onto the top of those uh, it is very restricted, tight space all around, but with time and patience, you uh, you certainly can get it done. So the next thing for me to do is back that out a little bit more and take that connector out. I'll just see if I can video this while I back it out. Yeah, so that pipe is free. Move that there. I just need to disconnect this one here now, so I'll just get the right screwdriver to take that off. 
DGR valves now removed. I just need to uh, switch over this heat shield. It's just a little button that you release and swap that over. I'll just bring you over to this side. And along the wall here, you can see the stages of removal, pretty much. Um, starting from the last bit removed, going all the way back to the first bits that were taken out, including the drive shaft cover as well over there, and then the under shield and the engine top cover as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'll probably only be showing a, a couple of short videos of when it's going back together. Uh, you do it in the reverse order of what I've already shown you. You'll get a general idea. This was never meant to be a step-by-step -step guide because of uh, the time restraints that I'm under today, but you will get a good idea as to uh, how deep this job is and what you will need to do to actually replace the EGR valve or if you want to take it out to clean it and put it back together, that is something you could do as well. So next time you see it, I will have a lot more of this back together. I have the new one fitted in now. I have nearly everything back together. I have the hose clamp to uh, reattach and a few other small bits around and then put the undershield up. But all in all, it is nearly done. I would highly recommend uh, if you haven't done a job like this before or if this is the biggest job you've undertaken I would uh, lay it out mark each bolt as they come out and have a very strategic plan for removal and fit back with that said I uh, hope you have found this video useful if you did please like share comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one thanks for watching Thank you.